When it comes to raising the bar on your bartending and culinary experiences, we have zero clue on how to go about it. But today, we spoke with Jamari Pinkhart. He is the co-founder and CEO of Hello Cocktail, a handcrafted non-alcoholic mixers, bitters, and soda. In this episode, we discuss a variety of topics, including the origin of the cocktail and how the bitters are a key part to its evolution, how the co-founders began Hello Cocktail back in 2012 to current, and what it's like to create a beverage business with good friends plus more. You are watching and listening to this documentary podcast, a platform for entrepreneurs, innovators, and creators of African descent. Hear stories, ideas, experiences, and advice on breaking barriers. Don't go nowhere. You're in for a good one. Thank you, thank you, Jamari, for um, sitting with us, talking on the podcast. Um, again, one of your hosts, Uncle AK. And chatting with me today um, is the co-founder and CEO of Hello Cocktail. How you doing, sir? I'm excellent, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. A pleasure. Oh, no, for sure, for sure, for sure. I want to start like this before we even get to who Jamara is, right? Because we've done a whole lot of research, you know, this week about, you know, not just Hello Cocktail, but who Jamara is, you know, and your co-founders as well. But you mentioned, and I quote, um, your business can only be sustainable when your brand can authentically and continually adjust and tweak its offerings and services to meet and align with the needs and demands of your customers. How important is this quote to you and to business with that? I, I mean, you know, <laughs> you definitely, you definitely found me somewhere and in, um, in that quote, and I think it's like, it's paramount to business. It's like business one-on-one. Without it, um, your business really can um, exist um you know for for a, a long amount of a long period of time if you just think about all the companies that you you know purchase and, and buy and like over your lifespan you'll know that they've changed many things about them over that lifespan right from the packaging to their messaging to to um, a bunch of things and that's all by design and all on purpose and it's all because most companies are trying to pay attention to the consumer and as the consumer changes you know, the, the brand will, will kind of reflect that change. Right. Right. Man, who is Jamari? Let's start there. Too. Who's Jamari? Let's see. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, a, a lot of things. Um, I, I think I'm, you know, somewhat complex as any human, but I'm, I'm kind of super simple at the same time. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a black gentleman. Um, I like to think of myself as somewhat sophisticated, but kind of silly. Um, I'm a father. <laughs> I'm a son, I'm a brother. Um, yeah, no, I'm, a, I'm a CEO uh, and I'm a learner, right? Um, yeah. Sometimes I follow and sometimes I lead, uh, depending on the situation. But all in all, like I'm just a dude who wants to to pay it forward. To you know, I've been I've been fortunate enough to you know um, been blessed with with having some innate skills, um, but uh, but more so the ability to learn from others very rapidly. And so that thing is just what I want to always pass forward. And, and that's who I am. It's someone who, who likes to take, but likes to give even more. Man, that is great. You said something very important there that uh, you're not just a leader, but also a follower as well. And that's one key thing that uh, most people can't really seem to differentiate. We're going to get into that later. And you also yeah. mentioned that you were CEO and not just a CEO, but a co-founder of Hella Cocktail. What is Hella Cocktail? For anybody who's listening right great, now, I myself I didn't even know what Hella Cocktail was. Yeah, you know? Great question. So, so the word Hella is an old um, Bay Area Oakland term from back in the days that means like intensely, right, or very much. Mm -hmm. So, like I'm from New York, and when something was really cool, we say it was mad cool. Like that shit is mad cool. Right, right, um, right. And so, one of my business partners from the Bay, and when he came to New York over a decade ago, all he would say was Hella this, Hella that. And we were like, shut the up. But when, you know, when, when we started making the, 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 the bitters product that I'll explain about, um, which is uh, intensely bitter, um, nothing fit better than Hella, right? And so Hella is mean intensely X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Therefore our, our products, they're all kind of Hella rocks. I mean, they're intensely flavorful. They intensely have a, a bold stance and position. And so, Everything that has hella in front um, from our product categories is like intensely flavorful, right? So Hella Cocktail Company makes, uh, you know, all kinds of like sodas and bitters and syrups that you can use um, in your alcoholic journey. 
uh, as you make cool cocktails, or if you're like a not drinker at all, you can make amazing mocktails with any of our products. So we provide all the accoutrement for behind the bar that's not the spirit itself. Man, that is so great. One hell of a story. <laughs> hell is a word that you know you hear for us the black folks, you hear us use that a lot too. So that's 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 really dope that you guys were able to take that, you know, and 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 make that a household name, you know, because it's hella, you know, it's hella this is it's a hella co- of a cocktail. Let me put it that way. How yeah, long have yeah. you guys been in business? This is our eighth year, actually. So we're almost, you know, up on a decade mark. Uh, the first few years were, were kind of like a hobby. And we thought about, you know, we were just, just tinkering around in the, in the, in the crib in Brooklyn. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, that, that kind of like that snowball started to happen. We started like get lots of inertia and decided to really focus on it and turn it into more, more than a hobby. Speak to us about your core values of celebrate when we are celebration roots, diversity and giving what it is um, core values and how significant are they to your business? They, they, it, you know, it's, they are the business, right? And like I said at the beginning, like um, those are the core values because they bleed through the team, right? So we're not a brand that tried to create a brand and then apply our core values. Our core values were first and then it bled through the brand because we can't even control that. That's who we are as people, right? right? And so we wanted to make sure that not only did it happen organically, which it did, but we were able to communicate exactly what those, you know, those values were. Mm-hmm. And so that's what you're saying as you, as you probably read them on the website or wherever you kind of, you know, pulling them from the things that we actually wanted to make sure that other people understood. We're not, make, we're, not we're, we're not just making it up, right? This is actually how we live day to day. And so we want to make sure the brand reflected those core values. And like, you know, like I said, for me, giving is one of mine that I can't even help if I right. wanted to. And so we want to make sure the brand does that too, from a brand perspective, but but the brand is only a, you know a, a conglomeration of, of individuals, right. so you know that's that these are the things that we do, right? And so we mm-hmm. want to make sure we're able to communicate them to to people who care. Gotcha. You mentioned earlier about bitters, sodas, and that. I personally, I keep hearing bitters, bitters. Can you please break that down for absolutely, people like absolutely. Know what bitters are? No, you know, you know, bitters are a, um, an ancient. Um, um, you know, flavorful infusion of spices and bitter root, right? So if you think about something like um, like a vanilla extract, right, that we bake with and cook with, um, vanilla is basically vanilla bean mm-hmm. um, infused into very high proof alcohol. Um, once it ages for a while, you take the, you remove the vanilla bean, it's now being infused, and now you have this vanilla extract flavor. Gotcha. Right? And you're able to put it in cookies and cakes and things like that. Bitters is the same thing, different spices, mm. right? So think cloves, cinnamon, allspice, peppercorns. And then we use that plus some fruit peel. And then the major ingredient, which makes bitters bitter is called gentian root. It's from a flowering plant um, indigenous to Southern Europe. And that um, root is very, very bitter bark. Um, and it makes kind of like the flavor profile bitter like so you could actually make a vanilla bitters right and mm. if you added gentian root to that bitter to that vanilla it become bitter yeah and you use those for cooking the same way you use vanilla but more you know more so people are familiar with it from from uh adding it to cocktails gotcha. so the definition of a cocktail back to like 1806 is ice usually you know water usually ice now uh, the spirit itself some form of sugar and bitters those are four ingredients to like any proper cocktail. So bitters is a very old, you know, traditional item that was originally used for medicinal purposes because mm-hmm. it has all these, um, the barks have a lot of medicinal purposes, but people started to add them to, to alcohol because alcohol used to be very, very nasty back in the day because yeah. it's like, you know, kind of messy and bitters allowed the flavor to blend nicely. And so some of the first drinks, you know, had just bitter than alcohol. And mm-hmm. the first cocktail obviously had those four ingredients because it was nice and balanced, which is like, kind of the, the 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 goal of anything you want to put in your mouth is that it will balance from a yeah. standpoint. They say you don't know what you don't know, right? Until you educate yourself to know. Um, how did you and your co-founders, um, Toby and Eddie, uh, get together and decided that, okay, this is what we wanted to do? Oh man, there's a crazy story. I- I'm gonna tell you part of it and then I'll skip a few steps, but basically, you know, uh, we like to say that we all met on Craigslist. Because back then, when when I was uh, 
back you know, before we started the company, I actually met Eddie and Tobin um, through Craigslist when I was looking to hire a crew to help me shoot a music video for my younger brother back then. And, you know, they came, they were awesome. They became really good friends. And over time, this other hobby was on the side, right? And so um, they were really the creators of that hobby because they were like super duper hipsters out of Brooklyn. And I was like, kind of like trying to be cool right. in my own skin, and we, but we always connected. And so when that project, you know, it started to have fruition to have some legs, it was like, this is something, we got something here. So let's, let's think through it, let's get busy. Let's keep it a hobby for a while. But then like I said, um, it had so much inertia and so much support from our community that we like, you know, uh, put other things to, to bed and, and, and rode this way. And that's pretty dope, especially, you know, with three heads, even though they say three heads is better than one, but in finding that one thing, you know, that's unique and special that, you know, all three people can share is very, very important. How did you guys, how were you guys able to, you know, find your own role in this, in this adventure? A great, great question. I mean, what's, what's, um, some of that's luck, right? Like you can't even design that, especially, you know, most people would say you don't get into business with friends don't give into business with family. And it's for good reason, right? Because right. those lanes always get messy. Um, but for us, we actually just organically have different skill sets, right? And they just happen to fit roles that a business needs in a certain, in a, in a, you know, at a, at a moment in time. Um, and initially back then, you know, Eddie was really, um, really well versed in like creating content. Um, and Tobin was, was had been always really well versed in making the liquid form, and I was really good at finance and like strategy. So we our our swim lines actually kind of carved themselves out naturally, um, and then we obviously over time we've learned and learned more you know more things within our swim lanes. But they've always been like these are our lanes that that lead the company, and it kind of because we have this or, organic space that we feel naturally comfortable in, mm -hmm. and over time we just you know became more and more of experts within our swim lanes. But yeah. It, like I said, that doesn't happen um, often enough, but when you can identify that it's happening, it's a beautiful thing. Eight years now in counting, right? What has been the most difficult uh, moment or are there any difficulties, you know, working, you know, together to yeah. drive this product? What are some struggles yeah. or some, you know, uh, 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 um, um, just for the listeners, right? Those who yeah, want to, yeah. into, into, into business and, you know, want to partner with other people. What are some key things that they need to look into before even going into, I want to say bed with another person, right? Business-wise. Yeah, no, you have to, you have to kind of like, you know, I think something that we learned early on was like, take the mask off, right? Like who's behind the eyes and the ears and the mouth that is, right. the, that is our human self because before you get, it's almost like being married, right? Like mm -hmm. you kind of know people and you kind of like have dated, but when they take that mask off and your lady takes a makeup off, you're like, you kind of a little different right now, you know, like, and, but you got to, you have to be, you have to really recognize what's underneath because that's what's going to drive you on a day-to-day -day basis when like things are against the wall, there's a deadline, things are not going well, right? That's when the pressure you know, they say pressure bus burps, uh, uh, bus pipes. And so you need to know what the pipes look like when, the, when it's messy everywhere. Right. And so for us, you know, we, we did a lot of that homework really early on. Like we're a really communicative group. We really, we can really express our emotions. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but at least it's in the air, right? And so we're not kind of like hiding our thoughts, our feelings, you know, our goals and dreams are not kind of hiding, they're always in the front. And so we're able to maneuver through those like high level wants and desires to get to like the bottom line of like, okay, what do we do tomorrow? Right. And so like, I encourage people to, that's, that's like the holy, that's like the holy grail, right? I think most businesses don't succeed because they don't have transparency. You always, you're going to fight, right? We have fights all the time. They're crazy, but it's like fighting with your family. Like, you know, like, you know, it's an outcome, you know, you got to get through it, but you know, you got to fight first. And so I think communication is one of those things you got to practice, right? It's like, something people don't really think through, but you have to practice it. And I, I'm not perfect at it. I'll never be perfect at it because no one will be me, mm -hmm. right? So no one's going to think that my communication is perfect and vice versa, but you have to know at least what's behind the mask so that you know what's coming, right? right? how to receive it and how to like, you know, what the intent is around discussions. So I think that's like the hardest thing to deal with, right? Especially when you have, when you have, um, when you have a co-founder with business partners. But you know, that's that's what we signed up for. So I, I can never complain about the learnings that come with truly understanding what other people's motivations and intentions are. Um, 
but I'm happy to talk more about that or any other, you know, issues and troubles and things that you have to overcome in, in running a business. For sure, for sure, for sure. We've seen a massive, well, not sin, but we know that there's a massive growth in alcohol, right? Um, currently in the United States, the world of that maybe. And also too, we've also seen a massive rise in people choosing healthier options, not just food, drinks as well, right? Um, you guys chose not to get into the alcohol um, um, route of things, but the healthier option, non-alcoholic rather. Uh, why did you pick to go non-alcoholic rather than you know the alcoholic route? You know, you have to, for us, it's, it's all about like, like, who are you and what's, what are you good at doing, right? Like, like, I, can I make alcohol? Probably. Can Tobin like probably make something up and make it really good? Probably, but that wasn't our passion, right? Making alcohol wasn't our passion. So this is, you know, we've, we've definitely had the, you should do this, put it in the, 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 the white space of what to do next, right? It's always in a conversation, but it's not something that was, we're passionate about. And so like, that's going to come through, right? And you know, the values that's going to come through. The inauthenticity is going to like bleed through the brand that you didn't really care about it. And so, you know, you really have to take a look in the mirror and say, what do we really care about? And we've been thinking about, you know, our newest innovation is called um, bitters and soda, sparkling carbonated aperitif, um, non-alcoholic. It's delicious, right? And so, you know, for us, we've dreamt about it for four years. So we weren't, we didn't have to think about whether or not we wanted to be in alcohol or not. We knew. We were making this product and when we had the, um, enough capital and infrastructure, we we're going to put this out when it was time and the, and the market was prepared for us. And so like, you know, it's beautiful that we had that thought and we we're able to execute it. And now like, you know, my daughter drinks better than soda every day. She could never have drunk the alcohol product every day. Right. right. And so like that probably wasn't part of our initial thinking, but to know that, you know, if we were so passionate about it that it came out so good that like everybody can drink it. And it's like, that, that's beautiful. And that's like, that's like things, that's what happens when you allow your passion to drive, your know, authenticity to drive your decision-making, right? It kind of like right. has more, more to offer than what you even thought it would right. you know, right. when you created, so. Man, grapefruit, lemon lime, ginger, um, spirits, um, spirits and dry, um, ar aromatic, Mm -hmm. I'm not even if I'm not saying it wrong. Yeah, no, it's got, I remember, how did you yeah. guys? How did you guys come up with these options? Why not banana flavor? Why not mangoes? <laughs> and why not? Right? How did you guys come up? No, with good it? question. Good. So <laughs> the first two flavors we created there were called uh, a dry and aromatic. I'm um, dry and spritz, and the formula, the flavor is aromatic, which is um, kind of like vanilla or chocolate or bitter. Right? The first flavor in the bitters category is aromatic. So if you, you see any bitters company that go first flavor to be aromatic, it's kind of like the most called for bitters for any cocktail. It's like, again, it's like ground zero. And so the first thing we did was put a sweet version and a, and a zero sugar unsweetened version into the market to see whether or not um, we had people who really, really wanted like pure bitters or people that needed like a bridge to understand what bitters were because so many people don't know what it is and it's a brand new space and category. So again, we created a sweet version and an unsweetened version just to test out what people, what people really cared about. And what we, we started to find is that, and then just, you know, the, the, the aromatic is like cloves, cinnamon, allspice, peppercorns, beautiful spices infused. So it's almost like a spice soda, right? Um, and we make the, we, the, the, the secret ingredient is our aromatic bitters. Remember, flavor from infusion of, of spices and roots. So that powers the soda. Yeah. Um, and so what we realized was that a lot of people like the dry version, the zero sugar version, the purest, people who are healthy, people who love, who just hate sugar, who don't want to be in that category at all. Think about your like, you know, people who drink your LaCroix and people who want something, but they want an adult version. They don't want the kitty version. Right. And so for us, we were like, wow, people really love the dry, the dry version and no sugar version. So we knew the next flavors had to all be dry. So that's the ginger turmeric. That's the grapefruit, that's the lemon lime. They all have now a fruit profile, but the same bitter profile to dry. And they're all like, I mean, super duper delicious, like I said. So we're excited about, about where those go. We just launched them. So for all, all the folks out there, um, log on and, and get you some. Packaging is amazing. It really looks amazing. What is your um, highest selling product right now? Ooh, the highest selling one right now is the dry aromatic. Um, I think it's like, again, it's the bitters, the bitters purists who know exactly what bitters are and have tasted before. You know, there's a, there's a secret insight in there. There's a lot of people who don't drink or who are pregnant 
or go to a bar or restaurant and are in between drinks, mm. they order a bitters and soda, which is a few dashes of bitters and soda water. And so what better way to, to enjoy it than just to crack open the can and, and have a, have the work done. What is your favorite cocktail right now? So that's our, our best selling one. It's also the, you know, out of the five, it's the, it's the, yeah, it's the favorite for right now. You know, it's people, people are, people are discovering it. And so when you discover it again, you go to like, if you were describing ice cream, you would try vanilla and chocolate first, right? Before you went to pecan. And right. so dry is like vanilla. Gotcha. Which would you recommend the most? What's your favorite? Right, right now I'm on a grapefruit kick. The grapefruit kick is getting murdered in the crib every day. So, you know, um, grapefruit's my favorite right now, but I'm sure I'm gonna change with the season. <laughs> how can people um uh, how how can people buy um your products? Oh, good question. Thanks for asking, man. Um, they can go to uh, either our website at uh, helicocktail.co, and if you actually put in uh, the code uh, the black man can, you'll get 15% off anything you pick up. You're also available on Amazon. Um, you can buy us at Whole Foods. Total one and more Harris Teeter. So there's, there's a few, you know, you know, retail options you can you can you can purchase as well. But our website or Amazon.com uh, uh, does a trip if you want to do it tomorrow. Gotcha. It's all gonna be right here in the show notes, guys. Um, one thing that could make or break a business is financing, right? Um, speak to us a little bit about that one moment. Um, no, not the one moment, but your journey from when you actually started, right, to present. Um, in terms of financing, when you had yeah. one dollar to now that you more than you know one million and more in revenue, listen, man, it, it's no joke, right? And so again, again you know, so, some of it is really truly understanding, you know, a, a little bit of how finance works and what you really want to think about. And I'm happy to to dive into it and navigate it with our discussion. But um, what I always thought about from the very beginning was, you know, the, the very old simple equation, which is matching your assets with your liabilities, right? Which means, do I have it in the bank? Am I gonna create it in terms of revenue or profit? And if I am, how can I match that with my outflows and the cash that I'm spending? Those things match, you can grow as big as you want, right? And sometimes it's hard to, 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 for those things to grow. There's a few ways to do it. Um, what we did was we actually took about 2,500 bucks in a credit card and that was our initial kind of investment, our initial outflow to create inventory. We created that inventory, which was gonna return once we sold it, double, right? So now let's use, let's say it's $5,000 that we're in, and we sell all the inventory, now we had $10,000. So, okay, now you got $10,000 in the bank, you have five. What do you decide to do? You can pay the five off that you owe, and then use the five and do it again or you can take the whole 10 and, and, and create inventory and recycle the whole thing and make 20. We did we did the latter, right? We said, okay, we're gonna keep keep the five, turn it into 10. Now we're gonna make more inventory with the 10, turn it to 20. We ain't gonna pay it ourselves. We're not gonna buy anything that we don't need. We're gonna keep it tight. And we did that for three years, we kept it tight, right? We didn't pay ourselves. We just re reinvested into making more inventory and then went and sold it. And this takes time. So this is different. There's different business models where people raise money, a ton of money up front, and do the same thing. We didn't do that because we didn't know whether or not we had a business or not. And so we wanted to make sure that the business actually had legs before we did anything else. And so that took us a while to reinvest over and over and over the profit back into the inventory, sold it, recycled. And so that's how we built the business. And that's how we were built. We were able to get into a seven figure business by doing that process over time. Um, and so that's one way to do it, right? And I can talk about other ways to do it, but that's the way we did it. Right, right. Man, um, speaking of processes, marketing is also part of this process. And, you know, we see there's a lot of noise, right? Online, you know, be it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whichever, a lot of companies doing a lot of marketing, right? How do you guys stand out in terms of marketing? And, and um, just for the listeners, right? What does it really mean to actually have a, mar a marketing budget? You know, with your business. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for us, it was it was it was zero at the beginning. We were the marketing budget, right? We would go into. So, so I'll take a step back. <clears throat> when we think about marketing, we think about how do we meet our consumers where they already are in their behavior. I'm not trying to pull customers out of their behavior. I'm trying to find customers as they are in their na their natural state. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking through the things they they enjoy. So, for instance, you know, the first thing that we would do was we'd say, okay. 
how do they find new customers? They say, well, where do they, they shop somewhere? Where do they, what else, what other things would they be buying if they wanted to buy our product? That you're probably buying something that was alcohol or some kind of spices or something like that. So the first thing we did was find all the spice shops in New York and then partner with the spice shops and say, hey, spice shop XYZ, would you mind selling our product on your shelf? We'll actually come in here and we'll help you hand sell it ourselves. Mm. And that's called the tasting. That's called a demo or a tasting. If you're ever in Costco, you see someone someone handing you a little, yeah. you know, cup or something. We did that, right? And so we did that for for a long time. We partnered with all our retailers, and that's marketing, right? You're educating the consumer. The, the consumer is already behaving in the store, doing whatever they were doing, and you're mm -hmm. in there something at that point. You're not changing their behavior, just sh showing them something while they're doing what they love doing. And so we did that was like, you know, marketing 101 for us was based on, on that idea. And then we started to figure out like how to meet those same consumers in different places. If they weren't shopping, maybe they were online in a certain periodical. Then we say, can we partner with that periodical and do something similar? Let's do an um, a article and let's ask them, let's give them a signature recipe that's only for that periodical, right? And so that we meet that consumer while, they, while they're reading the content they love to read. Right. And so we continue to interject ourselves where the consumer already lives. And that's how we do it now. There's no there's no special sauce. The question is, what is your consumer different? Because everyone's is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So are our consumers on TikTok? Probably not because we are more in the alcohol business. TikTok right now, at least more for kids. So our consumer doesn't live on TikTok. So at some point, does it make sense? Maybe, but you get my drift. We meet the consumers with their natural behavior. Right. So we do a lot of things in cocktail. A lot of things in sober curious, a lot of things in health, um, a lot of things about zero sugar. So wherever they, those people exist, we'll try to meet them, you know, kind of in their natural habitat. Man, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, you guys are, you know, your products can be found, you know, in grocery stores, um, can be found on Amazon as well, uh, um, at the bars, you know, some bars and all that. It's not easy, right, to um, get into these markets, to venture to these markets. How were you guys able and you just spoke a little, um, you just spoke about marketing too. How did you guys um, get into all these different spaces? What were the struggles like? Speak to, you know, listeners, because a lot of people, you know, have that fear of, oh man, I don't think I belong there, right? But one thing you guys have been able to do is no, we want to belong everywhere and how can we belong there and found a way to get there, right? So um, speak to us a little bit about that journey, how you guys were able to make it work for you. Yeah, no, that, listen, man, this is a, it, it's not for everyone, right? It's, it's it's very difficult and it's definitely time consuming and you gotta take a lot of notes. You gotta even take a no on the chin and keep it moving because they come more often than the yeses, right? Because everyone's fighting for the same space, right? The same space on the shelf, the mm -hmm. same uh, the same dollars from the, the retailer or, or whoever it is that, you know, or the consumer that has, you know, a finite amount of resources and everyone's fighting for the same, for the same resources. And so it's not easy, you have to really tell your um, your story, your value proposition, why your products are better than the incumbent or your competitors and like really got to prove it. And so for us, a lot of what we do is about proving kind of like what's called like the case study or like the microcosm of like what you want to accentuate, right? And so focusing on something very, very finite and very fine and proving it and making sure that it's successful shows the next person like that makes sense. Right, like, oh, that made you did that in that store, two blocks away. Got it. So you made, you know, two, three thousand dollars in that store with this item. Bring that item here and try to duplicate it. So a lot of what we do is showcase very small case study work to then accentuate and and scale um, the bigger stuff we want to do. Right, and so that's how we do it on a day to day basis: is continually to prove the small things work over and over and over until they become big things. That's great, man. It's it's it's, it's all so pretty much what you're saying. Um, to arrive at that, you know, bigger, at that bigger idea, there are all these little ideas that sum up to that bigger idea. Absolutely. I call them dominoes, right? You ever seen right. a domino show? Yeah. Like dominoes are just flee like, damn, this is incredible. Who, we have to think to yourself, who put all the dominoes up? Like someone actually put all the dominoes up before they knocked the first one down. Right. That's kind of what you got to do. You have to do all these little things that feel the grandiose. They feel like, wow, look at how long this domino is falling down, but someone took longer yeah. to put them up. Right. Right. And so that's kind of what it takes is that same, like, you know, mentality that even when you're not, even if you got the dominoes not falling down, you still got to be building them in the background. 
so that it never stops, right? And so that to us is what marketing is. That is like the actual grind of like getting to, you know, your, your point of $1 to 1 million or one store to 10,000. It's the same process mm. of, of, of stacking your ideas up and your marketing chips up um, over and over and over all day long. Yeah. Um, COVID times has taught us, you know, one thing, uh, businesses have to be versatile, right? Not just having that physical presence, but um, the online presence as well, because there are people who don't like to go into the store and there are people who like to go to the store. How has this 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 face, you know, the COVID um, 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 era, impacted your business, being negative or positive? I mean, for us, it was the you know the, the negative is that you know we we serviced a lot of bars and restaurants, right? So we we serviced airlines, hotels, um, big business, and that all stopped. And so with that, you know, a lot of our business like got got you know stopped in its tracks. And so for us, fortunately enough. You know, like I said, we've been in stores in our retail partners for a long time. We've been online for a long time, directly talking to our consumers and understanding where their behaviors are. Mm -hmm. So with that, we were able to say to our retailers, like um, what happened during COVID was people didn't go into stores anymore. What did they do? They shopped the brands that they've been loyal to that they already knew about. So fortunately for us, people could call and say, I want the Hello Margarita X. I've always shopped it. They've educated me. I know it's in row I, aisle three on the shelf at the bottom can you get me one of those right and so for retail uh, you know that picked up because people shop to their loyal brands the things they knew mm -hmm. and we we're big educators right and so again we've been talking to our consumers for years and years and years and educating them physically in the store so they know who we are they know where right. to pick us up on the online side we just again when i talk about marketing we just our consumer started to shift their behavior we just met more of them in that place, which has been online, right? And so we just ramped up more of our online communication and because we know where our consumers are online and what they do and what their behaviors are, what their habits are, what they read. So we kind of know where to go to find them again in that way. So yeah. while COVID has been, you know, been tough for our, what we call our food service or hospitality business, it's been decent for our retail and online business because the behaviors have changed. Gotcha. I cannot, um, you know, end this conversation without asking you a very, you know, um, key question to a uh, 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 key question as a black man um, in America and not just in America, but in, in, um, you know, business as well. Uh, what's your experience, you know, on um, being a black man and be it corporate America or just business America? Man, it's hard as hell. You know, I mean, this is like, you got to wear a few hats, right? Like, you know, you when I grew up, I was always taught how to play both sides of the coin, meaning like I can go hood, I can go into that vernacular in that space if I had to, but that's not what's kind of widely accepted. And so I had to learn how to put that other hat on and ascertain any situation, right? And say, okay, which, which, I'm still the same person, but which one do I have to exude or accentuate for this moment? And that's not, not an easy thing that we have to deal with, but for now it is what it is. And I think more so, more so what we need to do is um, normalize our story, right? Let you know that like, man, I come from the tough parts of Queens and like my accent and the way I sound may sound a little harsh to your ear. That's okay. Right. I have to make that more and more normal so they're like, that's what Jamari sounds like. And that's what a lot of people that come from when he comes from sounds like. And that's something that's beautiful. You got to accept that beauty. And so for, for me as a black founder, um, a lot of what I've been trying to do is, is push that narrative further and further and do things like this so that people can hear our sound and hear what we got to say and make sure that it, you know, that it resonates. And so when you hear it from someone else, it sounds familiar. And once it sounds familiar, you can stop, you know, you, you, you know, you can start, you know, start thinking about what I'm saying and not how I'm saying it all coming across. So what is he actually saying? Right. And so I think, you know, for, for, for black founders as we continue to move forward, this is the challenge, right? The challenge is normalizing our narrative. Mm -hmm. so that it, it sounds normal um and it doesn't sound like oh the black co-founder said or the black guy said this or the black female said that like no the dope ass ceo said this you know so um i think that's that's part of the mission is, is to make us sound more and more more and more normal to other people and to ourselves right, right. to our own selves we don't even sound normal sometimes and so you know we have to do that for ourselves first and foremost gotcha speak to us about international markets have you guys break into international markets yet uh, not really, uh, just just a tiny bit. Uh, we're in um, uh, Canada, Australia, and in France, but and that's because the cultures, those cultures, and the bitters culture is very similar. 
So yeah. it blends itself to those spaces naturally. Again, there are certain consumers that understand the products already. And so in those places, our products are there because it's a natural fit. But it's very small, kind of small potatoes right now because there's so much to do here at home that like when you when you go international, you start to lose control over your brand, over your values, over who's there doing and saying what on a day-to-day -day basis. We're not large enough to be there at that scale yet. And so, like I said, there's a lot more work to do in the 50 states here. Um, and, you know, that's what we're focused on for now. But you do ship international. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. 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 What is one thing, because I know probably, I would just assume right now that most of, you know, um, our viewers uh, do not really know what Hello Cocktail is, right? So there's a moment where I want you to kind of introduce them, you know, um, tell them why they should actually go to the store or go online, you know, sure. and, you know, sure. product. Absolutely. So for you guys who are on like kind of like your journey of cocktailing, right? So whether or not you're drinking something that's a neat, you know, whiskey on the rocks or you're trying to figure out how to make a margarita or you want to really be super like, you know, like bartender, mixologist, superstar, we kind of have all the products along your journey. Um, so think about something, that, again, as simple as a margarita or a Moscow Mule. We have something that can help you make that product, which is simply cracking our products open, pouring it on ice with the spirit. Your Moscow Mule is done, your margarita is complete. Beautiful journey. If you want to soup it up and get really, really crazy, and you want to really take on, you know, put on your suspenders and your and your, your hard hat, like we could do that. And you can try our cocktail bitters, and it's a little bit more nuanced, but this is all about experimentation. And so if you're an experimenter in the kitchen or behind the bar, you love to cook your own food, um, you should definitely pick up our bitters and like try to tincture your way into something that tastes amazing, which is really good. If you don't drink at all, we got you covered. You don't drink at all. You're not thinking about drinking. You don't want to drink. We got our bitters and sodas, carbonated sparkling aperitif go great with food. Usually like, you know, tapas, mesas, like, you know, your appetizer flow. Um, and you pair that with some with some food and drink it on the rocks. It's delicious um, spice soda. Uh, you can't go wrong. Hope you shop. Y'all heard the man. HelloCocktail.co. Go shop Hello Cocktail beverages. Spice up your life. You never it know. It is. You know? um, <laughs> I want to ask you some, you know, very, very um, close personal questions to the brand. Uh, hopefully, you know, we could get the answers from you. But uh, here to go. Who is your biggest retail <laughs> distributor right now or your biggest retail customer right now? We have two. Our biggest two customers are actually Total Wine & More, which is a big um, liquor chain around the country. And then we have Whole Foods around the country. That's our biggest kind of like pure grocery store. And so those are our two biggest customers, um, our retail customers in the country. Man, two top dogs. In terms of revenue, um, how much do you guys make a year? in terms of revenue and profits. We, right? we, we make seven figures. Let's just keep it right there. You know, sometimes <laughs> people listen, they try to dissect it and figure it out. We make seven figures on our way to eight. Who is your biggest competitor? Well, it's funny. We have different competitors because we make so many different products. We have different competitors in different spaces. Um, I'd say, you know, there's a big company called Angostura out of Trinidad and Tobago. That's uh, probably our biggest bidders uh, category competitor. Um, they're about 200 years old. They're actually the ones who created the category of bitters back in the days. And so they're our competitors. They're an outstanding company. Um, and, you know, they, they do their thing. I would say those are our largest competitors. You just said it like it was <laughs> 10 years ago. So 200 versus 80. Two, you know, listen, 200 right, years right. and we're on their heels in eight, no doubt. <laughs> Man, good job, good job, good job to you and the team, man. That's that's that's, that's really dope. Uh, what, what has been your biggest, um, you guys' biggest setback, and your and the biggest highlight to this journey? Man, the biggest setback was uh, 2018, uh, 2019, when we had to let uh, we have we basically have created this um, what we call a vertically integrated team that did sales and and the in store tastings in like ten different states. Um, and the biggest setback was we, we were trying to get a, a big retailer on board so we can give them more work. Um, and we missed the window uh, by a few months and we had to let a lot of people go um, because we didn't have enough work for them at that time. And that for me was like heartbreaking and, um, because we had built this team, you know, you, you're creating all this, this cultural atmosphere that's fantastic. And then to not, you know, meet the, meet, the, meet the goal at that time was something that was really, really tough for me to, 
to like swallow. Hopefully we'll be able to bring it back. But you know, then COVID happened. And so right now it's in a place where, you know, survive in advance. Yeah. And so that was a, a really big setback. And then that was, a, you know, something I felt, right? It was people involved. It wasn't a product. It wasn't, you know, a store it was actually people that we cared about. And so that was a tough one. Um, on the flip side, I think the biggest, and if you hear some of the background on Davis, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I also thought she was like through the door crying about something. Um, and uh, the big, man, we have so many, so many good things that have happened that I can't even, I mean, you know, every day that we get a new account, whether it's a cafe here or a, a retailer there, it's just one store meant that one person believes in what we're doing, right? And that the, the message is getting out. Yeah. So for us, those, those wins are like, those are the, those those wins are, are bigger than like people might say. Oh, you're at Whole Foods. This is amazing. I'm like, yeah, but the mom and pop store who like, this is their this is their living, and they bet it on us. Like, can't beat that, right? Because they're betting their 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 like daily their rent there on our product, right? And so those wins are bigger than everyone does, and, yeah. they, and they happen every day. And that's dope. That's dope. I heard you mention something about being in a business of providing um, units versus service. Could you break down mm. the difference between services and units? Yeah, I mean, I have this little theory. Now, it, it doesn't hold that much weight, but it's you know, it was the way that my the way that I think through um, a lot of things that I wanted to do and accomplish in my life. And I thought that you know, there's two ways to think about like entrepreneurship. One is a service-based business, and one is a unit-based business. Um, Services-based business require your time and energy at all times to get paid for the most part, right? So you think about going to the dry cleaners, think about, you know, an ad agency, like they are servicing work that needs to be done by the hour. And once that work is complete, they have to restart it in order to get new work, right? So if you're not on the clock, you're not getting paid. Um, uh, but you can still do well, right? Your clients can pay tons of money for your service. You can do it once and like, that's great. But for me, I always thought about having a unit-based business, which once you create it and you create the unit, it's about recreating it, but then people are taking extracting value and then buying it again. And so that kind of has almost like this autopilot way of maneuvering once you add, you know, add water to it, right? right. Add fire to it, you can create the space. And so I've always wanted to be in a business that have units because you can go get an order and like your time is, is now is now like you know being stretched and it's a lot more scalable right um and so i think if you think about most of the companies that you think about that are really wealthy they, they make something they make a unit um i think there's a hybrid now that's like you the shared based economy like your ubers and your right they're both they're like the service times the unit and they're like <laughs> that's why they're so rich so fast but usually traditional businesses have one of those two things i always want to be unit-based businesses and so when when Hella became was 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 in the hobby space, it was like, this could be it. This could be a unit based business that does what I wanted to do. So, how would you define success? about it? Say it again. How would you define success? Ooh, good question. I mean, success is really just living out your own dreams and values and principles, right? Like to me, there's this has nothing to do with monetary units or how many things you sold or what have you or which what house you live in. That is irrelevant. It's all about, are you living out authentically your values on a day-to-day -day basis without obstacle, right? Meaning without obstacle to your value, right? Yeah. There's always gonna be obstacles that are like in nature of like, you can't ship this here or this customer's not happy about that. Those things are gonna be things that are not in your control, but can you go through your world and, and create value, create money, create relationships on your own kind of authentic, through your own authentic self with the things you create then you're valued, then you're successful. And for me, like, that's a lot really matters. And I think everyone else is, everyone's success is their own, their own, their own story, right? You have to kind of like put on your own hat and say, what is your definition? Because this is my definition. Right. And so right. Right. my definition, I'm winning. Gotcha, gotcha. How can people connect with you? How can people, you know, um, again, get the products, you know, or connect with your co-founders and all that good stuff? Oh yeah, I'm happy, happy to share that. Um, for those who want to connect with me personally, you can find me on the gram. I'm at Jamari Pinkard, J-O-M-A-R-E-E-P-I-N-K-A-R-D. Um, if you want to interact with the brand, I pick up stuff. Uh, you can find us on the gram at Helicocktail CEO, Helicocktail Co. Or online, same same address. Um, and again, if you want to shop on our website, 
uh, hashtag the black man can for 15% off of anything that you throw in your cart. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Mari. Um, ladies and gentlemen, y'all heard the man. Um, go pick up, you know, go pick up some hella um, cocktail products, you know, shop, shop, taste, leave a review. You know, I mean, review something you know, very important. You know, share, share, with, share with a friend. Right, right. Show the friend, you know. Show um, me your skills. <laughs> <laughs> show your exes, you know, your aunties. Why not? Mm-hmm. Listen, Why not? listen. We love, we love, um, you know, we love chatting with entrepreneurs, you know, on 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 a weekly basis, you know, to to learn a thing or two about, you know, your journey, how you how you started, where you are right now, and you know where you're taking, um, you know, your your product. From the looks of things, you know, Hello Cocktail is just. You know, on a steep rise. So, good job, good, good job to you, man. Um, hopefully, our listeners could pick up, you know, a word or two from here and use that to drive their own products as well. For sure. Like I said, if anyone needs anything, any gems, any help along the way, if you're in this industry, give me a shout. I, I, I always, love, I always love to help. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. He is the co-founder and CEO of Hello Cocktail. Um, this you've been listening and watching Stuck Mirror Podcast, a uh, podcast for entrepreneurs, innovators and movers of African descent and here in the diaspora as well, doing their thing, um, shining their own light. Um, you can follow us on the gram. You can follow us on all social platforms at SITM Podcast. Subscribe to our channel at SITM Podcast on YouTube to get to get weekly ringers. Um, we have a blog section as well. Uh, shout out to all, you know, the amazing writers, you know, that contribute to our blogs on a weekly, you know, on a monthly and weekly basis as that. Yeah, um, we're looking writers you know to keep contributing to our blogs and we're also looking for people to join the team as well um let us know the email is sitmpodcast237 at gmail.com you can send us um, um reviews you can send us um, um dope uh entrepreneurs like uh, jamari himself you know to come see us and educate us on what entrepreneur really is and their struggles and all that um we've been speaking to jamari he's a ceo again and founder of hello cocktail i'm your host uncle ak shout out to the team shout out to reflex ma achiri Tutu, and we are out.